Here comes the sun by Bahatu May. The young filly Celestia slowly but steadily climbed up the small hill. Once she had crested the top, she took a deep, steady breath, held it for a moment, then slowly exhaled. She looked up. It was still dark, and the moon and stars were shining brightly overhead. She was earlier than she scheduled sunrise, to beat the unicorns tasked with the raising of the sun today. She fidgeted in place, her hoofs lifting up and going right back down where they were. Images of those unicorns, needing to be helped or in some cases carried down the mountain because their mana pools were drained from the exertion required to raise the sun, flashed unbidden through her mind. Those were grown unicorns, and she was just a filly. An alicorn filly, to be sure, which prompted more than a few questions, but still a pre cutiescent filly. But Celestia was determined. Something about the sun had awoken something deep inside her. It was as if it were... calling to her. Reaching for her. They were connected somehow. She just knew it. She looked up at the sky one more time. Determinedly, she lit her horn. Only for her to frown and let the magic fizzle out. Too late, she realized that she didn't know what spell they cast to raise the sun. But she had come this far. She wouldn't stop now. She tried again. Maybe it was like telekinesis? She reached out, further than she had ever tried before, and the golden magic glow lit up the grass around her hoofs and made her fur on her ears stand on end as she channeled her magic. More than she had ever had before. Reaching out for something she wasn't even sure was... Wait. Her ears pricked. She thought she'd felt something. Like she'd brushed against something warm. Was that it? If it was, it felt like it was huge. Which made sense, now that she thought about it. Her tongue poked out of her mouth as she tried again. Her magic more focused and exploring this time. It was enormous and brilliant and bright. Like a fire. But it didn't feel dangerous. Instead, it felt warm. Comforting. Like a blanket or a hug from her sister. But touching it wasn't going to be enough. No. She was going to raise it. She shifted the spell again, trying to wrap her magic around it. She'd expected it to feel heavy, and it did. But not in a ponderous, threatening way. More like it was just large because it happened to be large. But even so, it didn't feel too foreboding. In fact, it almost seemed to be resonating with her magic, maybe? Staswell might know something more specific. Her eyes widened and the spell flickered at the thought of her teacher waking up and rushing over to try and stop her. She didn't know quite as many spells as he did, and she was running out of time before he was due to appear with today's five. With a renewed sense of urgency, she dug her hoofs into the ground to brace herself and strengthen the spell. She could feel the sun there, and she knew it needed to go up to its proper spot in the sky, and so she would raise it. She tried lifting it, like she was doing a magic practice exercise. It was different than anything else she had lifted. Her eyes widened. She'd felt it move. Buoyed by this small success, she pushed harder. And slowly, steadily, the sun rose and night gave way into day. Sunlight peeked over the horizon growing steadily brighter before the dawn of a new day shone across Equestria. Celestia sank to her haunches, her chest heaving and her ears drooping, but her smile wide. I did it! She panted, exhausted but exhilarated. I... I did it! I raised the sun! The magnitude of what she had just done hit her, and she let out a bemused laugh. I raised the sun! By all rights, she should be completely tapped out. But she wasn't. She felt tired, sure. But like she'd gone for a long run. Not drained or debilitated or anything like that. In fact, she felt pretty good. 
except for that itching on her flanks. That was odd. Her hind leg kicked. Hopefully she hadn't stepped in an antil or anything. Before she could look, she saw movement out of the corner of her eye. She turned, ready to defend herself. But it wasn't Starswell. It wasn't even Luna. It was a chicken. Hello, she said, fully aware that she was talking to an animal, but she was still riding on the high of her success. She pointed. Iris, the sun! The chicken considered this for a moment, and then it let loose a shrill As it turned out, ponies aren't the only ones looking forward to the sun rising every morning. Startled by the unexpected sound, Celestia reared up and lit her horn. Magic surged as she tried to escape, and she teleported with a flash of light. She sat up, disoriented, her multicolored mane covering her eyes. She wasn't sure where she had ended up. She raised her hoofs and parted it like a curtain, but quickly wished she hadn't. Because that random burst of teleportation had somehow sent her directly into the chicken coop. And all of the chickens were looking right at her. Sawdust and discarded feathers slowly fluttered to the ground, scattered in the air by her sudden appearance. One of the chickens clucked. Um, hello, she started hesitantly. The chickens stared at her, and they sensed weakness. For a brief moment, all was silent, and then a series of ear-splitting screeches filled the air, interspersed with angry cries of poultry. As Celestia stared, aghast, Luna took a dainty sip and gently set her mug down. And that is why Celestia is terrified of chickens, she said primly. We here at Pony and Wolf Productions thank these amazing patrons of ours for their monthly support, without which all of this would not be possible. We sincerely appreciate it and every dollar helps, is needed, and will be used to keep us going to produce audiobooks for your continued enjoyment. It is, now more than ever, important that you support your favorite creators if possible, due to YouTube changing in a way, that is not very friendly to content creators especially small content creators, like us. In recent months, the names you see on screen have enabled Midnight and Visual Pony to keep going and only having to sell off part of their belongings to not end up on the street. As an incentive for everyone, Visual Pony has broken a vow and has promised to read and record Fallout E. Kestria, Murky No. 7, should the monthly support reach $1,500. To be clear, this is the absolute minimum amount needed to keep the apartment and all bills paid without starving, while a production of this size is ongoing. The estimated time for this production would be three to four years, but people already said that Project Horizons was impossible to do, right? And now look who did it, so with Pony and Wolf, you know we can finish the job. For further information on how to support us, please have a look at the description of this video as there are also other ways, like our merch store. Sincerely and forever yours. Your Pony and Wolf Team